Hello, uh, my name is Ben. Uh, Intel would like me to tell you that I work for them as a principal engineer. And that happens to be true, so. <coughs> and I want to share with you a technique that I discovered through necessity, uh, which I don't think is particularly used. But we've all got some kind of code that we use that represents a kind of platform level global API, I'm guessing. So this could be logging functions, networking functions, timing functions. Um, I'm guessing most people in this room have some kind of functions like this. And you want to use this without coupling. So what do you do? Or alternatively, you know, you're writing a library that uses this, interacts with the OS hardware. How do you test it? Right? Well, the answer is always the same to how do you test something. Use dependency injection. So you, know, you can do this several ways. You can do it at runtime with uh, you know, classical runtime polymorphism. I've done that. You can do it at compile time with static polymorphism, uh, basically doing the same thing, right? So we've got the, the interface defining the interface, and then the implementation. That's in the runtime version. And in the compile time version, same thing, except now I'm not using virtual functions, just statically, right? So the interface is a concept. Uh, and we've got uh, an alternative way I've, I've done this too. And a final way I've done this is just using a link time dependency, right? So, so if you're using those kind of global functions at a platform level, you have two libraries, and one of them's for, for production and one of them's for testing. These all have some kind of problem. You've got overhead for runtime injection uh, that imposes rigidity on clients. You, you know, what if your library is header only? You don't want to use the linking method. And sometimes your global API isn't on the platform you test on, so you need to do something there as well. So you DI, and that's great, but it works from the top. And a lot, a lot of times, you end up carrying dependencies, which is to say you end up passing the API down through your hierarchy, and you have classes which just pass it on without using it, and it just kind of you have to plumb it through all the way. Uh, the alternative is just upending the code hierarchy, which you often can't do. I wanted to inject a global API at the bottom where it belongs. So what did I do? I used a variable template. I thought, I thought to myself, how will I solve this? And I'm like, well, the only thing that C++ has that can do this is a template where I can define a base template that's injected interface. And I'm defining it with a pack. And then do thing at the bottom here. That's my global function in my interface. And it's taking a pack that looks kind of strange, because that pack's always going to be empty. And in, but inside of it, I grab the injected interface with that pack, and then I use it. So I've got my base template, and I've got my function that uses it. All I need to do now is specialize it for no arguments and uh, provide the implementation. And, and this works. I can write this function. Now, as long as I know what this function returns, as long as I put that trailing return type on, and it can depend on any arguments that pass the function, but it can't depend on the injected interface, because the compiler mustn't instantiate that template right, before, I, before I use it. But other than that, this pattern works great. The, the client gets to provide the interface and a one-liner. right, And I can provide a default interface if the client doesn't need to inject it. So yeah, this is great. The default implementation can control whether it's an error not to specialize. You can you know, have several functions there, and you can put static asserts in them or whatever. You can enforce the interface with constraints. Um, there's no coupling. You don't need to pass anything in from the, you don't need to pass any carrying dependencies down. Um, and the client's a one-liner to specialize the interface. And this is fantastic for testing, right? So this is the problem I was originally trying to solve. How do I test something that writes that stood out? Well, I looked at what FormatLib does. It fiddles with pipes and redirects. I didn't want to do that. This method just lets me do C++ all the way down. And the interface can be compartmentalized. So you know, I've, I've found this method. I, I haven't seen it used very much. It's actually possible with C++14, because you can do function templates instead of variable templates. And as long as you have the return type deduction, the specialization works. It doesn't work in 11 because there's no return type deduction. Um, so I just wanted to share this pattern with you. Um, it's, I found it really great for testing. I'm using it in a bunch of places now. Um, you can, if you follow this link, you'll find it on Compiler Explorer. 
and it's also used in our compile time minute build. Thanks very much.